Hello everyone, in this INR number 66, I will tell you about another important topic, CSF rhinorrhea. So what is CSF rhinorrhea? It is a leakage of CSF, right? So where it is a leakage of CSF into the nose, which is called as CSF rhinorrhea, right? What is most common cause? Most common cause will be traumatic, right? In this traumatic, what will be the reason? Reason is the fracture of lateral lamella of the cribriform plate. Right, so mostly it is traumatic and it is because of fracture of the cribriform plate and especially that lateral lamella of the cribriform plate. What will be the second most common cause? Second most common cause will be atrogenic, maybe because of endonasal surgery or because of face operation. Right, and a spontaneous. So this is the third type. So there are three things. Most common is the traumatic. Second most common is atrogenic. And for a spontaneous CSF rhinorrhea, you have to remember idiopathic intracranial hypertension. Right? And what will be the most common site? So most common site for CSF leak will be the lateral lamella of the cribriform plate from where they are getting damage. So that will be the most common site. But when we are talking about traumatic CSF leak, then most common site will be fovea ethmoidalis. Right? And what will be the characteristic clinical finding? So there will be history of leakage of clear watery fluid. Remember clear watery fluid, it will be sweet in the taste from the nose right so clear watery fluid will be coming from the nose and when patient will try to sniff it back it will be not able to sniff it back right so it is a clear watery fluid from the nose which cannot be sniffed back right so that is very important which cannot be sniffed back because it is a watery and it will be keep on going away right it will not coming up from the this thing right it will not be sniffed up by the sniffed back by the nose that is the most important history you will see in this one and in diagnosis what you will find you will see the halo sign or target sign or also known as double ring so you can see double ring sign or halo sign because the halo is present around them so why there is a halo because of the traumatic csf leak blood will be in the center so now you can see blood is in the center and peripheral area is made up of csf right so blood is in the center and csf will be in the periphery this is called as halo sign or target sign on electrophoresis this is again a very important and very specific test electrophoresis beta 2 transferrin will be present because uh, see because when it is coming from the nose so how you are going to differentiate from the nasal discharge to discriminate that beta 2 transferrin will be very helpful because beta 2 transferrin will be present in csf only right it will be not present in the nasal discharge not in the nasal discharge right and that is why it is specific for csf and best confirmatory test for the csf rhinorrhea site so we can also uh, go for the ct cisternography what is the role of ct cisternography they will be gold standard for localizing the site of leak when we want to see the site of leak then it will be good right and for the amongst the imaging modality hrct is imaging modality of the choice right so these are the four things we have to remember halo sign or target sign electrophoresis ct cisternography and high resolution ct scan right treatment is mostly conservative and early cases of the post traumatic csf rhinorrhea will be managed by conservative approach give the bed rest right give the bed rest and in that elevate the head of the bed right so head of the bed should be elevated you should be giving stool softeners so that patient should not be having a strain while doing or while going for the bowel movement right so that is what that is the basic purpose because when we will be straining so that that will be allowing more leakage right so that is why stool softener should be given right avoidance nose blowing right so avoid the coughing avoid the nose blowing avoid the vomiting right all these things should be avoided avoid nose blowing sneezing straining vomiting all these things right and we can give prophylactic antibiotics to prevent the episodes of meningitis and uh, we can also give estazolamide to decrease the CSF formation. And these measures are combined sometime. If indicated, we can go for the lumbar puncture also, right? And surgical repair. If, if there is a persistent case of CSF rhinorrhea, surgical repair can be used by nasal endoscopic approach, right? So these are important point about the CSF rhinorrhea. So keep revising all these topics for NEET PG and FMG exam boards. Best wishes to all of you.